good afternoon good afternoon and good afternoon how are you guys how's everything i hope uh, you guys are doing great in this quarantine time and uh, today's topic about my favorite portrait lens yeah actually it's my favorite portrait lenses it's not one they are two and they are both same focal length if they are the same focal length then why i have two i could have run with one right but i found that after doing extensive photo shoot with both of them that these both are totally different in many ways so what these lens are all right that's my hard and five millimeter f 1.8 that's i use for black and white and this is 105 millimeter f2 now what's so special about these lenses both are 105 this is 1.8 and this is f2 right so what they are for and how i am distinguishing them in terms well first off this is total manual focus no autofocus and this is like one of the uh, there are at list of 10 top 10 Nikon lenses uh, since last over 100 years and this uh, this lens is among those top 10 lenses it's the best portrait lens that I think anybody can have for black and white photography for black and white if you need the best contrast that 3d rendition like image is going to pop out from the screen this lens is the go and this is manual focus lens so most of you guys don't do manual focus but I, I develop my skills so I am very much comfortable with it all the professionals who are doing studio shoots they are using this lens because in the studio you don't need autofocus you just put your subject camera on the tripod go to live view and you can easily shoot so if you have Nikon Z series cameras using the Nikon Z series cameras focus speaking you can use this lens very easily and it produces the best micro contrast the best contrast the depth that you will get where you won't able to get from even f 1.5 now i can also understand that you guys are f 1.4 lenses in 105 millimeter category we'll, we'll get into that in a minute talk about this lens <clears throat> if you don't want to do manual focus and you want something auto focus this is the lens this is d type lens that can do auto focus on Nikon d7000 series like d7000 7100 7200 um, 7500 yep i guess d500 and all the full frame cameras d6 size d610 d700 d800 series D3, D3, S, D4, D4, S, D5, blah, blah, blah. This is five element lens. It has a special characteristic, which I'll tell you in a minute. What happened was, this is the only lens in the world right now where you can control the depth of field or let's say focus, the type of focus for the foreground before the foreground of the subject and behind the subject how you want to render because it has this special ring over here this uh, basically gives you the control about how you want the focus in front of the subject and how much focus you want and what type of focus you want front of the subject and behind the subject so this and i can basically filed a patent for it long time ago and nobody can uh, produce this lens other than Nikon. Now Canon basically uh, filed a similar type of lens lately in 2019. So I believe that's the second lens in the world after this who can do the focused rendering front and behind the subject independently. So that's 
that's it these both lens are made in japan made in japan this is all metal the the lens hood is built in same goes for here this is uh, lens hood built in now why i am having these two lenses because this is 1.8 and this is f2 not much difference one third of a stop this is this gathers a more light one third of a stop so why i am having these two well first off this lens produce massive massive chromatic aberration too much chromatic aberration this lens also produce chromatic aberration but not as much as this one so why i am shooting with this lens because chromatic aberration as per today's standard it's crap like it's like it's a bad thing you should not have chromatic aberration in your images so why i am shooting with them well not many people are aware of this fact that if you are if you want chromatic aberration or not chromatic aberration if you want the 3d depth the three dimensional depth in your images you need chromatic aberration now what that's supposed to be well it means that when any lens try uh, like renders with massive chromatic aberration it means that lens is trying to tell you that hey look at me i am trying to create a 3d image using a uh, over a 2d plane over a two dimensional sensor chromatic aberration basically is nothing but falling apart of rgb component of the light they are not falling at the same time they are falling at different point of time at the at different focal uh, point over the sensor so that what chromatic aberration is so light is for example if uh, this is a lens and light is coming from here like these three components r g b these three components are coming from here so on the focal plane on the focal plane of the sensor they are not falling at the same time they are falling some components falling behind the sensor of the focal plane some in the front some uh, on the focal plane so that cause chromatic aberration and that's how if you remember you have you watched hologram how hologram is created you need at least three or two at least three agree sources of light to create hologram and hologram like three different light source combining at certain plane at certain point and you see a hologram which looks which if you move around the hologram it looks real right same phenomenon happens in the lens when three different light components r g b fall at different point of time at different point of focal plane they try to create a 3d environment 3d image over a 2d sensor so that what these lenses does especially this one because of its imperfection this is not a perfect lens it is highly imperfect lens too much chromatic aberration now that too much chromatic aberration basically create a scenario over a sensor where you feel like if you are shooting in close distance you feel like this the image is going to be out jump out from the screen of your laptop or from your computer all the nikon old ais lenses are full with these kind of characteristics where these lenses produce the image in a way that no one can see before because of their imperfection now what about sharpness these two lenses are well sharp all the sharpness you need the micro contrast is incredible from both of these lenses like these lenses can produce imagine if you are shooting with d850 a these two lenses going to produce a light the image in a way if you zoom in all the way 200% you can literally see the pores and these pores are totally independent like if you are shooting a guy with a beard long beard you shoot from these lenses regardless color or black and white you can literally see each pore even regardless if you are seeing full 100% or you are seeing full view 
like full view image or you zoom into 100%. You can independently you know, see all these peers. If you're shooting model, you can see the skin pores. These lenses has ability to resolve easily 50, 60 megapixel images. And I personally believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that these lenses can produce up to 100 megapixel of images. They have the ability. After 100 megapixel, I don't know. I don't know. But incredible lenses, micro contrast, contrast, acutance, colors, off the chart, off the chart. Now, how do I compare with modern gray, hard and five millimeter, f 1.4? from Nikon or from Sigma or from Sony G Master Lens. Uh, well, Sony, I haven't used it. I'm not going to lie. I haven't used it. So I don't know. I use Sigma 1.4 once and I have respect for that lens. That lens is basically exceeding in performance in compared to Nikon 1.4 f105 somehow sigma basically discovered that formula and it's producing uh, that lens really, really producing better results than nikon rn5 1.4 see this is the thing sharpness is not the only thing you think that sharpness is the only thing no each lens has its own characteristic even i don't know whether you shot with this lens or not but once you do you can check my Flickr profile, there are uh, album for these both lenses, independent. And you can see the level of details that you can get. The 3D quality images rendered by this image are the superb micro contrast produced by this autofocus lens. You can check all these lenses results over there and then you will see why, why these lenses are my all time favorite portrait lenses. I still believe that shooting with Harden and 5 will give you the middle point of having a sort of a wider angle of view in compared to 135 and also the shallower depth of field which you cannot get with 85. So I can shoot with 105 1.4 but for me the type of the results that I am looking for especially for the black and white is Nobody can beat that lens. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You put that lens on D700 or D3 or D3S and you shoot black and white. Then you see the magic. I told in my previous video, one of the video that black and white photography is like 50% the gear and 50% is your contrast lightning. That's what I said in one of the videos. So camera gear that you are using that lens fall into that for black and white superb you don't have to do post processing much because the output directly you will get from this lens for black and white amazing guaranteed you can check my Flickr profile I will try to post the link in the video and then you will see for this You, you hardly find anybody selling this lens. Why? Because this lens is so damn good, nobody wants to get rid of it. That's how good that lens is. Nikon is still making this lens and then there is a reason for it. You go on eBay and you try to find these lenses, you will find them at that expensive price. Why? Because they are so damn good. So 105 millimeter, my favorite focal length for portraits because it gives me the best of both worlds wider angle of view and shallow depth of field thank you very much and i hope you like this video stay tuned for more stuff and view stay safe and stay home bye